Welcome back. All right, so news of the day video for all you fine people on the internet for your Friday, April the 12th, uh, the birth date of Jimmy Voorhees, Jason Voorhees, uh, not very well known little brother, born on Friday the 12th, sad. Anyways, uh, so we are going to talk about some news of the day, starting with something the internet's having a very normal reaction to. That I, I get it, I get it. So here's the thing. I think Mark Stone has a legitimate injury. I absolutely do, and I think he's legitimately on long-term injury reserve. I also understand why the internet furrows its brow and, and looks down upon what Vegas is doing and isn't happy about it. I get both sides on this. Uh, that being said, him returning to practice in a non-contact jersey today means the internet has gone crazy with speculation. The one thing is that if a player is going to return for the playoffs, they have to be practicing now. But player wants to return to the playoffs. Doesn't mean he's going to be, but it means that if you're going to make that attempt, you got to start now. Uh, for the Vegas Golden Knights, this is a team that is much different from last year, at least it seems. I did the video yesterday on it where the stats almost line up. So we'll see how it turns out once the playoffs get rolling because no one expected Vegas to do a lot in last year's playoffs. Maybe one around, maybe two. And uh, those models were until Stone was activated and then that changed some of the models. But um, this year it just doesn't feel like Vegas is as dangerous as they were last season, but we shall see. Uh, and again, the internet... Just having the kind of reaction to this news that you would you would expect. Because it's what the internet does. Vegas is not a popular team outside of Vegas fans. Uh, so, uh, moving along to other news. Connor McDavid is unlikely to play against the Coyotes tonight. Uh, it should be an interesting game tonight in Edmonton. I'll, I'll be curious to see what kind of effort that we see from the Coyotes to start the game. We'll talk about the Coyotes as well in this. Of course, for McDavid, he has 99 assists. And so he's on the verge of 100 assists. I would think he'll probably play against Vancouver. I think you sit him out tonight and you play him against Vancouver, a game that could be for uh, the lead in the division. So we shall see. Uh, Philadelphia news. So this this has been talked about the last couple of days, and I've started seeing more and more of it around the media, uh, that John Tortorella is likely to stay behind the bench. Uh, so despite some bumps along the way, I think people can understand that this team shouldn't have been anywhere near a playoff spot, and the reason they're near a playoff spot is the coaching style of John Tortorella. Is it for everybody? No. Do I expect changes in Philadelphia in the offseason if he's coming back? Yes, I expect some players to get traded out, uh, but there there are definitely some players who flourish under his leadership, and there are some who really, really don't. I remember in Vancouver, there were some who famously didn't. But I think Tortorella in Philadelphia makes a lot of sense. If he wants to stick around, great. Uh, but if he ever decides he just wants to have more of a leadership role in management and not necessarily behind the bench, I think the Flyers will do whatever they have to to keep him within the organization. That's the impression I've had the whole way through. Uh, certain games where he's not behind the bench, he's actually up top watching and that kind of thing. So I, I think we'll see some of that from Tortorella as well. So going back to the Edmonton game tonight. Uh, Arizona general manager Bill Armstrong is flying to Edmonton to meet with the players before tonight's game. So it, it definitely feels like he's going to basically be telling them, at least my guess is he'll be telling them, look, go out there, play your game, do your best. Uh, we are go we're going to do everything we can to keep the team in Arizona. I don't think this is just going to be a, yeah, you guys should probably pack your stuff because we're, we're moving. I don't think that discussion's coming, not at this point. Um, and, and, the day that it broke about all the Salt Lake City stuff, they were still posting on their social media about, you know, the new arena and how excited they were. So it is a mess. Uh, Andre Cherney's been very outspoken, uh, apparently both publicly and privately, about how he doesn't like how this has been handled, and I agree. I think that ownership has kind of botched this a little bit, and I think the league has as well. I think the league deserves some blame for how all of this is, has gone down you want to set up a scenario where this this comes out and it's the league or the team announcing stuff not stuff leaking out and then the team and the league trying to figure out how to how to deal with it once it's leaked out but again the league has not come out and denied any of it so if there was nothing to it the league would deny any of it how many times have we seen gary bettman make a special trip somewhere just to say hey um, we need a new arena or else we're going to move or to, to, you know, basically say, I'm, I'm not leaving Arizona. We're staying right here. We haven't seen that. And so um, all he said is he's committed to the market. He believes in the market. 
market is not the team. The market is basically saying, we think the NHL can work here, not necessarily meaning Coyotes. So if you read between the lines, there's there's that, right? So we'll see what we find out from the GM meeting with the players because usually something leaks out from these kinds of meetings. And uh, I feel bad for the players because they're being stuck answering all these questions they don't have answers to right now on, on the future. So we'll see if that changes tonight. Um, and the first time, and when I saw this, I was like, the GM's not traveling with the team? Weird. I know not all of them do, but I... I I think it's best to travel with the team when you're the general manager. Anyways, that's just me. You guys can let me know your thoughts on that as well. Uh, so Seattle really doesn't want Shane Wright's entry-level contract to burn a year. Uh, that being made obvious by them returning him to Coachella Valley today. I do wonder if next CBA, if the union's going to say anything about this. Like, And I don't, I don't know how they would say anything about it, but there have definitely been times where a player is approaching a milestone that would burn a year on a contract and suddenly that player gets demoted. And it's not based on merit. Shane Wright has been one of the more dangerous forwards for the Seattle Kraken since being called up. Uh, but if he plays 10 games, then that activates the first year of his entry-level contract. So since he's played eight games, he played eight last year as well, uh, it does mean he's not eligible for the Calder next year, I believe. I believe by having played eight games both years, I don't think he's eligible for the Calder next year. Uh, but if he'd played 10 this year, he would have burned the first year of his entry-level contract, put himself that much closer to being a restricted free agent, and of course, they, they don't want that. So Wright gets sent back down to Coachella Valley, and uh, I, I feel bad for the guy, because honestly, in a game last night where I thought Seattle, I mean, they had 50 shots, I thought he played well, um, and, and now he gets sent back down to the, to the AHL. Uh, Lane Hudson has signed his entry-level contract with Montreal, so Habs fans who were very, very excited about this. So normally, I don't report on guys who are... I don't think he was a first-rounder, but normally, I don't report on the ones that aren't first-rounders signing entry-level contracts because I could just fill the board with guys. But uh, in this case, I felt like I should put that on the board because otherwise, it could be Habs fans. You missed Hudson, you missed Hudson, you missed Hudson. I didn't. Uh, but at any rate, um, I always like that when people say, you missed this player. Nope, I... I I don't. I, I just sometimes I don't put everybody on the board, uh, especially if I'm talking about free agency and whatnot. Uh, and sometimes when I'm doing organizational charts, maybe may not have everybody on there. But Hudson uh, signs an entry level contract for Montreal. So let that hype train uh, just just go and we'll see what he can do at the NHL level soon. Uh, speaking of which, Liam Ogren, number 19 pick in 2022, is set to make his NHL debut tonight with the Minnesota Wild. So first off, Dinov comes over and starts playing for them. Now you've got Ongren com coming in. Uh, of course, Wallstead getting a shutout last week. So uh, for Minnesota, there's a lot of young guys coming in. There's going to be more. Of course, they missed the playoffs this year, so they have the opportunity to maybe get a good draft pick. I know this year's draft is not considered to be as exciting as last year's. Last year's is seen as being stacked. But still, uh, Minnesota should get a decent player if they draft in the 13 to 15 range, somewhere in that area. Or maybe they win the draft lottery and draft like fourth or fifth somewhere in that region. Remember, you can only move up, I think it's 11 spots, 10 spots. Anyways, uh, so Ogren making his debut tonight. We'll see where he slots into the lineup and how he looks. Uh, coming out of last night's games, there were two milestones I wanted to talk about that we're about to see. First off, Austin Matthews is only two goals from 70 with three games left. And I've seen a lot of people saying if he, wins, if he gets 70 goals, then he should win the heart. Which is weird because deciding that a certain number of goals means a guy's the most valuable player is odd. And I've, I've, I've always thought that with, with points too. In some cases, it's obvious the guy with the most points is the most valuable, but I, I mean, I'm not saying what Matthews is doing isn't fantastic because we haven't seen anybody get to 70 goals in a very, very, very long time. But I, I don't know if that should qualify him for heart. I'm wearing my Kucherov jersey, and honestly, and I've said before, I, I think McKinnon's the one that I would vote for if I had a vote. Uh, but Kucherov at 98 assists. Again, the Kucherov jersey. Um, Kucherov's going to hit 100 assists likely in their next game. And so uh, Kucherov's going to be in that mix. And obviously, Matthews hit 70 goals. There's going to be a lot of discussion. But I think McKinnon's going to get a ton of votes. McDavid's going to get some votes too. I can't remember a year where there's been this many players. You can make the argument for uh, for them winning the heart. And so uh, that's where we're at right now. And 
I would have put the Norris up there, but Quinn Hughes has kind of, you know, achieved the milestones he's going to. There's no, like, really big numbers coming up with him. Other than I, I do think he's going to win the Norris Trophy. Just, again, all the hockey I'm watching, and they start getting into trophy discussion a lot on the hockey broadcast right now, and a lot of the broadcasters are saying, well, I think it's Hughes. Yeah, I think it's Hughes. Yeah, it's going to be Hughes. So I, I, I do think it could end up being a landslide. I do hear people talking about Yossi, Makar, Fox, but in general, they then say, but yeah, Hughes is, Hughes is probably going to win it. So uh, we'll see what happens. But let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've not done so already. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.